greetings and welcome to It's a Charming Life. We are so excited to have a cozy chat with you today about our Christmas cottagecore decor and traditions and recipes that we like to enjoy here at Cobweb Cottage. And just in case you're new around here, my name is Lindsay. And my name is Jonas. And we would love for you to subscribe and stay for the cozy cottage content that we are all about. Mm -hmm. Jonas, I really like the sweater you're wearing today. Thank you. It kind of looks like a Norwegian flag. Oh, but thank very you. very cozy. I take that as a compliment. Oh, good. <laughs> and you look stunning. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I kind of feel like I look like Mrs. Claus in this outfit. Which make me Santa Claus. Yeah. And I take that also as a compliment. <laughs> and speaking of Santa Claus, Christmas traditions can look different for everyone. And uh, since we've been rooting ourselves down in the cottage uh, lifestyle and slow living, mm -hmm. Uh, we discovered something that the Scandinavian Christmas tradition and decor that I grew up with mm -hmm. fits right into cottage core. So pour yourself a cup of tea and make yourself comfortable. A lot of these things that we're about to share have a very long history that we don't have the time to go into today, but it all is all very fascinating things. We might touch on a little bit of the things. <laughs> and let's do this. Yay. <laughs> So why don't we begin by talking a little bit about the tray that we have in front of us and it's a lot of delicious treats on it mm -hmm. and it's Christmas treats that I grew up in Sweden enjoying every year and that you've been introduced to. Yeah. So what we have on the tray here is some Swedish treats for fika time, right? Yeah. And what is fika? Can you explain for those who don't know? Fika is a, a wonderful thing that is the little moment between the meals when you need a pick-me-up. And it starts with a cup of tea or coffee with something sweet. Mm -hmm. And it's just a tiny micro little meal <laughs> that you can enjoy for yourself or in group. And after this fika break, you return stronger than you were before. Christmas fikas are extra special, aren't they? Can you tell us more about the saffron buns, please? The saffron buns is very traditional and you wouldn't really eat them any other time than around December 13, around the third advent. So this is how the saffron buns look like. It's a traditional S shape or eight, depending on how you see it. <laughs> and it has two raisins tucked in. Mm -hmm. And what's your, uh, what do you think about saffron buns? Or lussekatter, as they are called in Swedish. Which is a very funny name. I remember I was like, what? Cat? What are they called? They kind of look like a cattail, maybe. You're right. So I remember the first time that I visited you in Sweden, it was in the summertime, and your mom made these saffron buns because she wanted me to experience like a real Swedish treat. Mm. But I was not familiar at all with the taste of saffron as something for Christmas. So it took me many years of having them at Christmas time to finally feel like, oh yeah, like when I smell saffron, it's uh, like a Christmas smell. When you smell saffron mid-December, you can feel like that Christmas is almost there. So the saffron buns are, from what I understand, a tradition for St. Lucia Day, right? Can you tell us yeah. more about that? St. Lucia is an Italian saint, and she was said to provide food for the poor that was hiding in the catacombs. But in the darkness, she had to light up her way by carrying candles in a crown, since her hands was full with trays and food. Unfortunately, she was killed for her beliefs of helping the less fortunate. So the tradition of her unselfish act of kindness has become a celebration that most every Swede looks forward to. December 13, Alucia arrives to most homes, schools or public workplaces with traditional Christmas treats on her tray and singing Christmas songs. And most important, she comes with candles and light since this occurred during one of the darker days of winter. Thank you for telling us about Lucia. And over the years, I've come to see how the celebration comes at the time of December when you feel like you really need that reminder that there's light and the darkness mm. and all the Lucia celebrations are just so cozy and it sure doesn't hurt that there's a nice uh, 
fika tray of foods <laughs> to go along with everything. I agree. So if you are curious to make this yourself, everything we talk about in this video will be in a separate blog post on our blog. Yes. It's a charminglife.com. <laughs>
a bit uh, shorter Santa Claus, I would say, but instead of wearing red and white uh, colors, he, he wear more na nature colored, like green and gray, just mm -hmm. to, to disguise himself a little bit. They are basically seen as helpers around the farm. They yeah. take care of the animals, and sometimes they even have a cat that will hang out with them. Mm. And the tradition is to, that the farmers want to thank them for protecting their livestock and their farm by giving them a bowl of porridge on Christmas Eve. Correct. But if you forget to give them the porridge, what happens? Oh, he would be a little bit mad at you. And you and might also, have it, some You would trouble. have like troubles. <laughs> Your milk will turn sour mm. and uh, perhaps you uh, you get a big rock thrown down oh, gosh. from your chimney. I would say that the Scandinavian little Santas are like farm helpers, uh -huh. invisible farm helpers <laughs> that like porridge. Here's another example of a little tomte, how a tomte can look. <laughs> and uh, as you mentioned, it has the cat yeah. companion here. And this is actually made by my mom. And we will always appreciate this gift and mm -hmm. treasure it. So this is our little uh, cottage tante then. Yeah, cottage exactly. No. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> made by your mom. So now when we have gone through these four treats, which one is your favorite? Ooh, I cannot decide. They all complement each other very well. Mm. So we, it's very fun around the third advent Sunday to make this nice spread and just have a slow moment to enjoy the coziness of winter even if it's you know super dark outside mm. um, you know the light is going to be coming back So why don't we move on to our cottage core Christmas decor? And why don't we start outside the cottage talking about what, how we decorate? So a very cottage core thing to do is to make your own Christmas wreaths. It's really fun to go out and go foraging for some of the supplies. So finding pine branches and cutting the right ones and maybe finding some holly or some mm. berries. Of course, you always have to be careful to make sure you know what you are picking is not poisonous or anything, mm. and to not take more than you know that you're going to use. It's definitely something nice about reconnecting with the nature, and in the winter, everything is very bare, but they the evergreen trees, you know, really stand out. Because mm. we have before decorated the outside of the cottage with like string lights, but since the cottage is from the 1920s, it just never felt like the right fit until mm. we started making our own wreaths and then also the little swag, uh, you know, decorations mm. with the pines. It's not like a full wreath, but it's just kind of like hanging. And once we did that, it just felt like the right fit. Yeah. And so cottagey and cute. Lizzie, huh? do you think I have swag? Oh, definitely. You got the Scandinavian swag. So something I really love about Scandinavian Christmas decor is just how simple and classic it is. So I am holding, what is this called in Swedish? Uh, Advents Justake. So like an advent candle holder? Because the first Sunday, you light one candle. The second Sunday, second advent, you light two candles. And the third advent, you light three candles. Mm -hmm. And the fourth advent, you light, you light all of them. Mm -hmm. And the next Sunday is Christmas. So it's like a countdown to Christmas, which it I is. find very, very nice. Every advent Sunday is like relaxing. What I really like about them is that you can put natural decor inside. Of course, you got to be careful with anything that's flammable <laughs> mm -hmm. because we have placed some moss and pine cones in here so we just got to keep an eye on everything but inside our little advent candle holder are these red and white mushrooms which in real life these mushrooms are highly poisonous so i even have this little mushroom candle holder 
<laughs> it's so cute. You would kind of see these in all of the Swedish Christmas decor, and I remember asking you, why? Why do you have mushrooms? It, it was seriously nothing I ever even thought about. Really? It, I, I guess I'm, I'm home blind when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was like, oh, red and white, it's Christmas colors, and you know, I never well, questioned I it. <laughs> Actually, I don't think you're too wrong there. Reindeers like to eat them. Mm -hmm. uh, and in like the very northern... Yeah, in, the, in Lapland. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also read that the Sami's outfits can be red and white. They also have blue color mm -hmm. in their outfits. So beautiful yeah. outfits. And the Sami people are in indigenous mm -hmm. to Lapland. Pretty much their outfits and a lot of their traditions we, we feel like look like what has inspired all the folklore about the North Pole mm. and the elves and Santa Claus. It's very fascinating. And I look like a mushroom right now, actually. You, you do. Whatever the reason, Swedish uh, Christmas decorations have mushrooms. It's definitely a very cute cottagecore thing. We have to admit to you that we don't have a real Christmas tree. We just have a small uh, fake one. It's all that we have room for here at Cobweb Cottage. Yeah. It works out because it fits on our tabletop and we have our straw decorations that are kind of the only ornaments that fit the small Christmas tree. These straw ornaments are so lovely. I, I wonder how far back this I know they, goes. they go back way back in the Scandinavian handcraft history. And we didn't make these ourselves, but you you could see that it, you could probably very easily do it. There's all different shapes and sizes, hearts and stars and, and uh, goats. What is the deal with the Swedish Christmas goat? Uh, the Christmas <laughs> we have goat. one here. Yeah, it's uh, been a uh, part of the Christmas tradition for a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe as you can see like illustrations where a goat is pulling the like, presents. Yeah, the presents. Mm -hmm. I feel that the Christmas goat have become a more friendly and kind creature uh, than it was originally. A lot of these traditions were like mm -hmm. that, right? I, I like I like them. <laughs> yeah, we love all the folklore and fairy tale yeah. stuff. That's pretty much it for our Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. It's very simple, just with the straw ornaments and mushrooms and a few extra woodland animals. What I love most about our decorations is that if they're not natural, they're either handmade or they were gifted to us or they are secondhand or vintage. Mm -hmm. So everything just feels like it really has a story or it has love put into it and it just makes our Christmas decorations, even though they're very simple, makes them very special. So these original paintings are painted on uh, wood pieces, yeah. birch to be exact. It's very Scandinavian. And in Sweden, there's there's moose. Yeah, we have <laughs> the moose here, uh, which is the Swedish king of the forest mm -hmm. with the crown. Have we you, have a little arctic fox here. Have you seen an arctic fox before? I've never seen an uh -oh, ar arctic that's fox. Okay. And then you had another wood piece that already sold. Yeah, I had an owl. Very cute owl on it. So there's these two left as of right now. And there's some some paintings, framed paintings also in the collection. So I just thought we'd mention it really quick in case you would like to shop in the Woodland Library as part of your Christmas gifts. And there's also uh, this print available. Which is, uh, had have the Tom Tevi talked about the little gnome. And it has a lot of Scandinavian influences like the Northern Light mm. and uh, what else do we have? We have a cottage. Yep. And some birds and owls and all the because elements I, of a cottage yeah, core Christmas. A little bit of everything. And I love that the little Tomte is holding a lantern and he's staring at the northern lights. Mm -hmm. And it just really tells a story, Jonas. So we, there's one last thing we wanted to show you. Something that a little craft that you can make. What do you call these little hearts in Swedish? 
They are called paper hearts, papers hjärtan. The purpose is that you can hang these in your Christmas tree like this. Yeah. And you can like put a little candy, candy or like a little gift. Mm -hmm. you, you don't need a Christmas tree. You can hang them anywhere really. Mm -hmm. So I just read a little bit about these Christmas hearts to get a little history behind them. And it uh, was saying that Hans Christian Andersen was the first one who made one. I actually filmed when I made, made this one. So you can just tag along and uh, all you need is two colored paper and uh, a scissor. And you just cut two, uh, two hearts. Half, you cut a half of, of the heart on one page and on the other page you cut the other half and you cut some lines there and then you just braid them in. That's the That can be a lit, little bit tricky the first time so I suggest you doing a more um, simple one to begin with. Maybe like just a few, just a few squares there, like mm -hmm. four I believe. Because you, you are supposed to be able to open it. And believe me, I've been there. I've, I've been braiding a long time and then as I'm gonna open it, <laughs> it's like all the stuck into each other. Oh. <laughs> it, it happens. Okay. And I must say, you look like a paper heart. I look like a mushroom and a paper heart. Yeah. <laughs> dog owners look like their dog, but you, look, you sure look like your decor. It's so true! The more we live at Cobweb Cottage, the more I just start to match the decor. Yeah, sometimes I, I can't even find you. <laughs>you got some inspiration from our Swedish inspired Christmas decor and we would absolutely love to hear your cottage core Christmas style if you make your own decorations or what you bake for the holidays anything that's simple and cozy we would love to hear about it below and if you are interested in the art pieces I showed there's a link below where you can buy the original art or a link to Etsy where you can find the art prints mm -hmm. And before we go, I would love for you to say Merry Christmas in Swedish to everyone. I can do that. God jul from, from all, all of us to, to all of you. you a Merry Christmas, Christmas and God jul! jul.